Hi guys, it's Lori from Rip Row Hollow. Good to see you. I'm needing to make some bread today. So I'm gonna go a different route. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm really busy right now. So I think this is what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna make some easy bread. And uh, calling it easy bread means that there's only, um, pretty much there's just three ingredients. And what I do is once I get it mixed up, all I have to do is stick it in my refrigerator and it'll, it can stay in there up to two weeks. So I'm gonna bring you along and I'm gonna show you how this is done and explain it to you because I think you're gonna to wanna to do it. It's really easy and it's really convenient. But this is what I'm going to store my bread in the refrigerator. In fact, it's my old flour bin, and it's glass, and it's got a lid. You need a, a gallon container with a lid. Now, if you want plastic or whatever, that's fine, but I'm going to use this glass container. And I've got uh, three and a half cups of warm water right here. And you got to have two packs of yeast, which equals to... A, one and a half tablespoons of yeast. And I'm out of my bulk, so I had to get me some packets. Now, when I, usually what I use is the Fleshman's Active Original Yeast, because that's what we've just always used. But if I can find it, and I did find some, I'll use this, it's called Platinum Superior Baking Yeast. And it's, it's really good stuff. So that's what we use today. But all we have to do is put our three and a half. Now, I I oil the, the bottom and the sides of my container, my gallon container, because this is going to be a really sticky dough. But I'm going to put my three and a half cups whoops, of water in my container. And you can see it's got a, a wide mouth rim on it, and that's probably what you're going to need. Now my three and a half cups of warm water and I'm going to put two packs of yeast in here. Well, I'll tell you, it's so hot in my house today, I don't have the air on and it's really humid. So I'm just staying here sweating. Okay, my yeast is in there. And you're going to need, um, how much salt is it? It's one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt. Now, if you don't have kosher salt, you can use table salt or Himalayan salt, whatever you've got. But if you use just regular table salt, don't use tablespoons. Use one and a, or, uh, yeah, one and a half teaspoons instead of one and a half tablespoons of kosher. So I've got kosher, so it's going to be one and a half tablespoons. And I'm going to put that in there with my yeast. So you got your water, your yeast your salt and your flour. That's four ingredients. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now you need six and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now, um, there is a bread called Easy Eat Bread. And I think it's on the... on a diet plan. I can't remember which one. Some, one of y'all probably know what it is. And you can use whole wheat flour in this if you wanted to. But if I done it, if I used whole wheat, I'd probably put four cups of whole wheat and two and a half cups of your all-purpose. That's probably what I would do. That way you come out with a more tender crust. Okay, so you need six and a half cups of flour. So all you're going to do is just put your flour in your big container. You're not going to have a bunch of dirty dishes over this. It's just such a convenient, easy bread. You can make out of this recipe, you can make four loaves of bread, which is about a pound loaf. You can make 
I think it's like three baguettes and two pizza crusts out of it. You can make a couple pans of rolls and a couple of uh, loaves of bread out of it. It just depends on through the week or, le or the next couple weeks what it is you're eating. It's just, you know, what you need for that day. That's why I love it so much. Because if I come in and I need a pizza crust, I come in here and get out what I need for my pizza crust. Or if I'm out of bread and I need to make a loaf of bread. You know, it's just about that simple. Now, like I said, it's going to be a, a wet, sticky dough. And that's the way you want it. If you've got any dry pockets in it, you can add you a little more warm water to it. So just stir it up good. Now, if you're going to use some of the, the whole wheat in it, flour, you're probably going to have to use a little bit more water in it. So, now, once I've got this stirred up, good, all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it sit here on the table, and I'm going to leave it sit anywhere from two to four hours. And every hour, I'll come here and stir it. It just depends on, you know, how sour you might want it before you put it in the fridge. And putting it in the fridge, what it's, what it's doing, it's slowing. It's not going to be as much of a sourdough taste. But if you want that sourdough taste, you can leave this out after you mix it up for about 24 to 72 hours. You can leave it out that long and uh, stick it in the fridge after that and it'll stay good up two weeks. Any time that you need to make some bread or rolls or pizza crust or whatever, it's, all you got to do is just take out the amount you need. And it's just that easy. Now I'm going to leave this out on the table. And like I said, I'm going to let it, uh, I'm going to let it set. I'm going to try two hours because it's pretty warm in here. And uh, after an hour, I'm going to stir it. Then I'm going to let it set another hour. And I'll come in here and start and see what it looks like. And it's going to rise. And as it rises, and it's where I want it, what it's going to do is going to double in volume. And then it's going to kind of collapse. And when it collapses, it'll be flat on top. And then all I'll do is put the lid on the stick in the refrigerator. And like I said, it'll stay good up to two weeks. So, anyways... That's all there is to it. So, I said there was three ingredients, but there was four. You had to watch me. But anyways, I'm going to let this set out. And uh, when it rises and all that stuff, I'll bring you back and let you see what it looks like so you understand what I'm talking about before I put it in the fridge. So, I'll see y'all at the wall. Have a good day. Here it is after two hours. You can see how it's uh, doubled. And I'm fixing to start down, then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. And that's where I'll keep it until either I use it all up or I can keep it up to two weeks. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make me a loaf of bread or some rolls or whatever I needed. So you don't have to put it in the refrigerator and wait to use it. But I do know the trick, the longer that it ferments, the trick is that a cold long ferment time for the dough, it, de it develops flavors and gluten and also it breaks down the carbs. So that's another good thing for your, your cold fermenting. Now, a cold ferment, it prevents it from souring, so you're not going to get that real sourdough, sour taste from this method, unless you leave it out 24 to 72 hours before you put it in the refrigerator. So... If that's what you're wanting, just let, leave it set out for a while. It's not going to hurt it. And uh, 
if you're wanting it to break down the carbs before you bake any breads, you need to let it ferment in the refrigerator probably five to seven days. But this is really good bread. It has a, a great texture for like French toast or bruschetta. It has a, like a thin, crisp, chewy crust. And the inside will be soft with kind of a bit of a chew to it. But uh, it's just a good thing to have on hand. Because, you know, tomorrow if I wanted to make a pizza, I could come in and get me out enough to make me a me and Mr. Brown a pizza. If I wanted to come in and make me a loaf of bread, I'd just weigh out one pound of my, my dough and shape it and I'd let it set out at room temperature and let it rise for an hour. Then I would put it in my oven at 450. Um, be the same with your hot rolls. If you wanted to come in and it was like it's just going to be me and Mr. Brown, and I wanted four hot rolls for my supper that night. I'd come in and get me enough for four hot rolls, set them out room temperature, and let them rise a little bit. Then I would put them in the oven probably about, uh, for hot rolls, I'd probably put them in my oven for about 375 till they got good and brown. So it, there's just a lot, of, a lot of good things you can do with this recipe. And it's easy, didn't take no time to put together, and, uh, it's just a good thing. So, anyways, I hope you like this recipe, and I hope y'all try it, because it's easy. It's a good thing to have on hand, especially if you're a busy woman or a busy man, and you like homemade bread or hot rolls or pizza dough uh, crust, or you can make uh, pizza sticks out of it. It's all good stuff. So, anyways, I just wanted to share that with y'all. I'll fix and bring y'all back up here because I wanted to see you. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, it's a good one. You can try it. It's easy, like I said. Um, it's good to have a refrigerator. And, uh, well, I don't have Phyllis Diller here today, but boy, I don't look too pretty either. But anyways, I'm not here to look pretty. I'm here to make bread. <laughs> but, uh, I hope y'all do try this, and I hope it works out for you. And like I said, if you want it to be more fermented and more sourdough taste, just let it sit out. It's not going to hurt to sit out for 72 hours before you put it in the refrigerator. <clears throat> 24, 72 hours. It's just like your sourdough starter. And uh, then you put it in the fridge and just use it when you need it. It's all good. So, uh... Y'all have a good day. I'm fixing to make some supper, and then I'm going to go to work. And uh, y'all have a good weekend. I'm going to work in my garden this weekend. We had a lot of rain yesterday. I don't know how many inches we got, but it rained and rained and rained. We needed it really bad. So my garden is really perking up, and I can't wait to show y'all. So y'all have a good weekend. Y'all stay safe, and uh, God bless everybody. See you later.